Um, Craig, uh, my name is Tears for those who don't know me, I don't know if I said it earlier, but Craig uh, is in Paris with Colette. Uh, he is also on eldership here. Um, and Andrew is on eldership and he's disappeared. He's bunking the second one. Chana, I'm going to mock him minus 10 points. Um, and he sends his love. That's uh, Craig. Um, Andrew, you can send his own love. He's outside. Um, and his, his big thing is, can we pray for Paris? Can we pray for Europe? They just had the equip happening not so long ago. And um, a big thing is for the young guys to catch what God is doing um, for the partnerships that are happening in the different nations. Um, it's crazy how we often say that the gospel was sent out with missionaries from there. But at the moment now, it's almost like a godless the continent, godless continent, um, where you've got church buildings, but no one in them. Um, and then the churches are finding it hard to find buildings. Crazy, yeah? Um, so, again, this isn't the end of it. This, this isn't church. This isn't Christianity as it ends when we show up like this. God's doing things with us and doing things outside of these walls and in other nations. So, we partner together to see his name rule and reign over this earth. Amen? So, yeah, he sends his love. And if we can continue to pray for what God is doing there. Um, cool. So um, this this morning, uh, I get the privilege of preaching. Um, I said it earlier. We'll be friends later again. Um, just remember that. I might mention a couple of times, but um, we're speaking about God having a good things planned for you. Um, and I hope we hear what's on his heart for you. If it's not for you, well, it's not for you. Um, if you've got your Bibles, can you turn with me to Ephesians 2, and we'll begin from the 8th verse all the way to the 10th. Um, Andre spoke on us being a God's masterpiece last week, and today we're speaking about him having a plan for you. So let's begin together. It's from verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork or masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now here, Paul is explaining how you and I become a child of God. In fact, how anyone becomes a child of God, how one becomes saved. This is him explaining exactly that. Now, if we look back, he in verse 1 of the same chapter, he says that we were lost in our transgressions. We were lost in our sin. Hopeless. Dead. We were out at sea, drowning, and we didn't even know we were drowning. Lost. Absolutely no hope. Lost in the world's systems and plans. We were in a dark room, and we didn't know if it was dark. We saw nothing. We couldn't do anything. Almost like in a, in a, in a cold room, in a freezer, sitting there, shaking. That was our future. It's what we had. Hopeless in our transgressions. And then in, from verse 4 to about 7, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy made us alive. God, who was rich in mercy, made you and I alive. This is who we were, dead in our sins, transgressions, but God, who was rich in mercy, makes us alive. There was a time in our life where we were lost to, us, to, to our sin. No interest in who God is and who he, who, who, who he claimed to be. We didn't even know he was there probably. Now this is not so. We are alive. And then he says from verse 8 how that happens. So let's go there again. Verse 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Now the first thing is grace. Grace is not just the name of a person. I know a lot of graces is a lady in Joburg, um, a friend of us from Cornerstone, and uh, um, 
I don't know if I gave her this name or whatever, but I call it Grace of God. Because when she introduced herself as Grace, then she explains why. Um, but that's really cool. Side note, just bonus for you. Um, it's not just a name. It's God's great love for sinners. His willingness to come into our lives, make us alive, even for those who are not deserving. Our nature was out in the lost world, not knowing who he is, had no desire. We were dead in our sin. But rich in mercy, he decides to get involved in our lives. He jumps into our lives to come and save us, even though we don't, say, we don't deserve it. God's free help. And can I say that God is not willing to save us by any other way? When we were lost out at sea, and I'm just using these pictures so you can remember them, but when we were lost out at sea, in, in the dark room, in the cold room, there was nothing. There's nothing we could do to save ourselves. In the cold room, there was no emergency escape. There was no, we didn't know where the light switch was. There was nothing around. We couldn't see the land. There was, we were hopeless because of our own doing. But he comes and says, I'm going to do it, and it's at no cost to you. Absolutely. This is the only way I'm going to do it. He's not willing to save you by paying for you, by you paying for it. And you can't have it any other way. And the next thing it says, through faith. And what is faith? It's just believing. It's just seeing it and believing it. It's just being in the cold room, freezing, and seeing the door open. You're like, ha, huh, okay. It's being in the dark and the light comes on and you're like, oh, I didn't see you there. It's out in the, in, 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 in the far oceans and seas and all of that stuff there. And a boat comes up and it's like, oh, I needed saving. It's just seeing by faith and saying, it's there. And grabbing hold of it. Charles Spurgeon uses this example. Um, and he was speaking to uh, uh, um, tell the story about this one Sunday school teacher who was um, sharing this and explaining this exact thing of um, um, salvation through, by grace through faith. And he says he was telling um, these Sunday school kids and the, the, the teacher, Sunday school teacher, my days, it's you guys. Um, and he had a watch on and he takes the watch off and he says, um, I'm going to give this to anyone who wants it. So let's go with Rolex because we all know what that is. And it's like a fancy one. Um, I'm going to give this to whoever wants it. Cool. And then he walks off and stands by the door there, like when you guys walk out. And the kids come, the cool kids in the class, walk out, smile at him, carry on. And the little girls come through and they're giggling <laughs> past him. And then this one little boy comes up, walks up and gets to this teacher looks at him, looks at the watch, grabs it, says thank you, and walks off. And then the, all the other little kids now saw what happened. They're like, oh, but, well, wait, wait, wait. We didn't, we didn't think you were serious. We thought you were joking. You were using an example. And can I say that most of us, mm, a lot of us think it's the same with Christianity and our salvation. It can't be that it's just free. I just got to take it. I just got to believe. I just got to accept it. No ways. There's something I got to do. But there's no other way. You just got to believe. This is true. It is only by grace and it is through faith. A free gift and you just saying, thank you. And we carry on and it says, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. If you saved yourself by something you did, you could boast about that exact thing. So, if you come into church was how you got saved, even though someone sp st stood like this, like me, and preached a good message about the King of Kings, and you were like, yes, that's me. If there was something that you did, then you could boast about something that you did. It's about how you lived. I was a good person. I walked old ladies across the road. I, 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 I gave to the church. I, 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 my resources, everything was just for, for God. If it was anything that you did, 
You could boast about that. What about the cleverness? I was saying um, last night I, I was at a graduation celebration. Um, their daughter became a doctor. And they professors, by the way. Side note. If it was anything about how clever we are, then w the rest of us would be disqualified. I don't have, I'm not a doctor, I'm just Tibbs. I'm an elder of the church and I hate it when you call me pastor. I'm just Tibbs. That happens to walk in the gifting that he's called me to. But if it's because I'm a pastor that I'm saved, then what about you? If it's because of my degrees that I'm saved, then what about those who don't have? If it's about how much money I have, then what about those who don't have? If there's a criteria about anything of who we are, then what about those who don't have? It is all about Jesus. If you saved yourself 99%, oh, in fact, like if God saved you 99% of your salvation and you did 1%, you could say, glory be to God for 99% of my salvation and glory be to Tibbs for 1% of my salvation. But he won't have it that way because he wants 100% of the glory. So what does he have to do? He's got to save you 100%. His work, not yours. It is not from yourself. It is not your doing. It is not my doing. It is a gift of God. Can I say, the ability to see, I was saying that you showed up at a, maybe when you gave your life, you showed up at a, at a, at a, at a church service like this and said, yes, that's me. Can I say, the ability to see was a God thing as well. The Bible doesn't refer to salvation be, being about our doing, anything that we do to become saved. The Bible describes us as being born dead by nature. The things of God were foolish to us. We had no hope. By nature, we were lost in the ocean. By nature, we had wanted nothing to do with God. Lost in our sin. Romans 8 says that we were hostile to God. It's who we were. So it couldn't have been our cleverness. It couldn't have been our showing up to church that made it. We were hostile to God. But it is a free gift of God. If you are ever to be saved and know the Lord, it has to begin with God. That's where it begins. The fact that you saw was him. The fact that you're no longer lost in the ocean is because he decided to say, I'm coming for you. The fact that you can see is because he decided to switch the light on in your life. The fact that you were able to, to, to be saved is because you're in the nice warm, we should have had the gas heaters as an example. But anyway, um, it's because someone else did it. He did it. He showed up, opened the door, and you were like, it is all him, 100% him. So he would get 100% of the glory. He had nothing. Hear me. We just celebrated breaking the bread. It was his cost. His payment. His doing at 100%. So who deserves the glory? Him. And he says, you can have the freedom of that. Verse 10 says, for we are God's handiwork or masterpiece, like Andre even shared. I think uh, uh, Martin was sharing about his version in his Bible as well, that we are his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, at this point that you acknowledge that it's got nothing to do with you for your salvation, you were hopeless, dead in your sin, in our transgressions. We had no hope but God. Free gift, grace through faith. At this point, he's got good works in store for you and I. We are not saved by our works, but we are saved for good works. He's got things planned for you and I. 
Faith itself, the fact that you believe, is not your good works. Like I said, even that was his good work. It's almost like creation when, it, when he created the earth. Um, he spoke there was ocean and land. He spoke there was trees. He spoke and there was. He spoke and there was. He and you and I were. I don't know where now, but in my Bible that says that the earth decided to be like, oh, I'm going to show up today. That the land and sea decided, oh, today's a good day to just split. He decided it, and it was just like your salvation. I can't explain why people aren't saved today if it's that simple. I'm like, well, Lord, just reveal yourself to the rest of them. But then I'm like, four good works. Maybe once I'm saved, there's good things for me to do so that others can see him. Maybe. Maybe it's just me. Okay, we'll leave it at that. But you are saved for good works. Are you looking for a job? Guess who made you? Guess who's got good plans for you? Go watch the master. Steve stood here and held the Bible and said, this is the answer. This is the blueprint. If he's got good things planned for you, go to him. Why? He's got good plans. If you're looking for a significant other, go to God. He's got good plans for you. Are your finances in trouble? Go to God. He's got good plans for you. He prepared in advance. Can I say, don't try to do anything unless you've been saved. Don't do anything for God unless you've been saved. Because it will not get you salvation. It is hopeless. It's like filthy rags. It is hopeless. But once you see who he is, once you've said yes to that, thank you. Finished work. Thank you for revealing who you are. Thank you for the finished work. You step into that gift. Best you believe there's a whole lot of stuff for you to do. And that's why we get together. And that's why there's life groups. And that's why you're, you've got your qualifications. All There's good works for you to, and I to do. Otherwise, we might as well just save and die and go to heaven. The reason why we're still left behind. Not that we're left behind, but whatever, you hear me. Because he's got good plans for you. And all this, the good works we do is on, honestly just a response in worship. It's just a response. I mentioned it earlier, so I'm mentioning for you guys. When I came here, joined Grace Cav again, uh, repeat that it's got nothing to do with me. I'm just referring to time frames. There was one band, and we've got three at the moment. We still need more drummers. We still need more singers. We still need more guitarists. We still need more keyboards. We've got three because you gave your gifts. Hello? I don't know what time you arrived, but you got tea and coffee when you got here, if you wanted. Because someone gave their gifts so that you can have tea and coffee. Good things planned. The fact that you here. I get to benefit. The fact that I'm here, you get to benefit. Good things planned in advance. It is said that uh, the entrance to the kingdom is absolutely free, but the annual subscription will cost you everything. Everything. He doesn't want 
part of it. He wants all of you. When we get baptized, we often um, take our watches and wallets out and put them to the side, and we're like, just my body. And that's a good thing because it's dead to this is what he came to say. It's not my watch and wallet. I heard this one says it's not my thing, but I think it's quite smart. I wonder if we should be jumping in with our watches and wallets and saying, all of me, everything dead, alive to you. Thank you. What, 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 what do you want next? Are you, are you a doctor? Are people around you getting medical help? Are you a lawyer? Are people around you struggling legally? Are you um, whatever you are? I just went blank on all the things that people do. Are you in the police force? Hello? Is everything I am surrendered before the king and saying, I'm dead, but you made me alive. And what I have is yours as worship. I'm not saying as if you're a lawyer and you charge per hour, stop charging per hour. I'm just saying he's put people around you. He's put people in your life for a reason. Does he have access to your qualifications and degrees? Does he have access to your resources? We did a, um, uh, what's it, a, a purpose series not so long ago. And there were things that we were generally all called to outside of our unique purposes like doctors and whatever. And, and um, forgive the doctors. I was at a doctor's graduation thing yesterday. So I just think about doctors at the moment. Um, But if you can put that slide up, we all have general purposes that we are called to. Every single one of us. The first one is Christ, and that is to know him. That's where salvation starts. We're called to Christ. We're called to who he is. And then we're called to Christ's likeness. It is this sanctification, becoming more like Christ. Do people in your life know that Christ lives? Things planned in advance. Do people in your life know that Christ lives? Are you his hands and feet here on earth? I was telling the guys, I don't know which group I told this to. I might have told too many people. But anyway, um, I'm a bit of a germaphobe. So, like, I'm better now. So, don't judge me. Um, and we used to, many, quite a few years back, we used to go do missions on, on, in, in um, the streets of Yeovil and all of that. And it was a big thing for me to go and hug the homeless. Because all I could see is the dirt. But I knew this is what God called me to. And God started challenging me and just saying, hey, bud, you can go home and clean all of that. Will they experience the love of a father in that moment? Am I becoming like Christ with every part and releasing? If I'm being baptized, Tibbs is dead. Alive to what you've planned for me. Am I becoming like Christ? We're called to become more like Christ. Do people in your life know that he lives? And then we call to community. This is community. Are you meeting with people from this community or other communities during the week? Or is this the only time that you and I get to see each other? Are you having lunches, dinners, and all of that stuff? Why? Because we're called to community. We're called to community. So much so that he believes in community. In Genesis, he says, let us make man. Hello? Are you with me? community for your good and my good. I get to benefit because you showed up. You get to benefit because I showed up. We're called to community, to doing life together. The common good. Again, uh, I asked, are people around you benefiting 
from what he's called you to. Please, again, we'll be friends later. People's lives becoming better because you're in it. Your skills and gifts that he's given you, is that benefiting people in our lives? Doctors, nurses, whatever, whatever, business owners, this, that, that. Are people's lives, the common good, becoming better because you and I just said yes? The common good. And then the Great Commission. Craig is in Paris right now. We call beyond just Grace Cove. We call together like this. We call into your offices. We call into your schools. We call into your families. We call into uh, We call into South Africa. We call into Africa. We call into the world. We call into the nations. Go therefore and make disciples. We call to it. Every single one of us. Good plans in advance for you and I. Are you living surrendered to the king? Living surrendered to his plans that he planned in advance. Are you asking him, Lord, what should I study? Lord, where should I be moving to? Lord, what do you want me to do? Are we asking the master creator? Are we in his plans? Because all we have then, we just respond in worship. I shared earlier about Cain and Abel. We'll go into finances, whatever. But it's not about finances, but it also is about finances. So, Cain and Abel, brothers. Now, firstly, what do you give someone who has everything? Owns everything. But it says that Abel was here, or well, not physically, but you get me. Cain was this side, and Cain's sacrifice offering was rejected. What? It's worship. You said I must give. I'm, I'm, I'm giving. We don't have a lot of time to go. It's a, it's a whole preach on its own, I tell you that. Maybe one day we'll do it. But can I say that Abel takes, he was a farmer, they both were farmers, he was farmers of cattle. I don't know if there's a special name for those kind of dudes, but like cattle, livestock farmers. Life, he was a livestock farmer, so he made more of livestock. He takes the first, again, back in the day, fat things were... <laughs> Don't know where that, where, where that changed. But he takes the fattened calf, and it was celebrated. He takes the fattened calf, the best, and he says, Lord, this is worship. Cain takes his crop, puts it together, fills the barn, this, this, that, here, and he's like, okay, we're good. Lord, here we go. Worship. And God's like, ah, no. Rejected. Started looking and wondering why. It's still worship. He, he calls us to worship like that. He calls us to give. And I'm using finances. He calls us to give 10%. I gave 10%. But Abel's worship gets received. Why? Because he surrenders his tomorrow. He says, I don't know if my calves are going to be, my, not calves, what's the, I don't know if my, I'm going to use cows. I don't know if my calves are going to make more calves tomorrow. I don't know if they're going to multiply. But here's what I got now. Thank you. Because you've got my tomorrow. Cain says, are we sorted? Are the barns full? Cool. We're good? We're good? Lord, thank you. If we believe that he's got good things planned for us, can I say that we worship with our first? We worship with our all. We worship with our time. We worship with our resources because we know he's got our tomorrow. Can I say, if you are tithing him, good. It's part of your worship. It is good for you.
But can I also say, if it's a debit order, please stop. As an example. Because tithing is meant to be worship, not just giving money. It's meant to be worship with the resources we get, because it's all his. We've got to be part of our worship. Oh, it's gotten quiet. We're going to be friends later. Yeah? It's got to be worship. So much more so, Jesus uses the example of this lady who gives coins. Um, uh, I think it was in Mark, where he, he, he says there's a lady who came, he was telling the, the, the disciples, you guys, like, you're neglecting the poor. But he says, um, maybe if we did offering here, and I just stood here as the pastor or the elders, we're like, yeah, watching you guys. Oh, Steve. Oh, and basically, kind of what he was doing. He says, they came and they were offering. Guys were hoying big cash. Boom. Credit, not credit cards, but they were all the big money. And this lady came with a couple of coins. And he recognizes her. He says, in Greek, the word is bios, where we get biology and biography. That one, I said it earlier. So in essence, she gave all that she was. She gave who she was. It's not about the ones and zeros. It's not exactly 10 rand, 20. It's who you are. Giving who you are. When you tie, you say, God, you got my tomorrow. This is, thank you. I get to worship with that. When you, if you got your, your doctor's degree, oh, doctor, if you got whatever skills, if you're a musician, thank you. These guys were here up early in the morning around 7, I think, or before 7. In times they're here at 6.30. Thank you. Sacrifice. They've got jobs, they've got whatever. Thank you. Someone came here and, ma- uh, and I know who it is. Daphne came here and baked those lovely rusks. Thank you. In the week. Does he have access to your resources? Because you know he's got good things planned for you in advance. Can I say, I, I'm not speaking about exact finances, like exact numbers. But it's worship. Because we know he's got our tomorrow. We know it's good. I'll end with maybe if the man can come up and we'll worship together quickly. At least we'll remember his name. Martin Luther King Jr. says this. If a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Or sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. I wonder, are you and I doing our jobs well? Is he worthy of it all? For from you are all things. Therefore, to you are all things. Because you deserve the glory. Do we believe that? Does he have access to your life? Does he have access to your resources? Does he have access to your time? It's just a belief on who he is. It's a belief on the scripture that what I give has got nothing to do with my salvation. I'm not doing this to be saved. I've got that freely. It's the only way he'll do it. There's no other way. Again, I said, if you think coming here is your salvation, stop. If you think walking old ladies is how you're going to get saved, stop. If you think giving money to the church is how you're going to get saved, stop. See him. Just acknowledge the free gift. Thank you. And once you've got that right, 
He's got so much for you. He's got so much for you. Good things that he's planned for you and I. He's worthy. He's worthy. He gets the glory. He gets the glory. We as a church, a body, get the privilege of your gifts. Why? Because we've got lights. We've got electricians that do lights. That's another thing. Electricians that do lights. We've got people that give towards resources. We've got people who build stuff. We've got... He gets the glory. Yes, we benefit from that. But he gets the glory. From you are all things. To you are all things. Let's worship together. Let him get the glory.